Hi there, Tony Sycamore here, IG's Market Analyst for Australia. With two sessions left to go, the benchmark S&P 500 is down 3.98% in October and has officially entered a correction. The last time the S&P 500 fell as heavily in October as it has done this year was back in 2018 when it fell almost 7%, a move that was the encore to the main event, a stomach-churning 15% intramonth fall in December. Back then, like now, the Fed was in the latter stages of a tightening cycle, which coincided with geopolitical tensions. Back then, it was a trade war with China. While the 2023 backdrop is similar in many respects, there is one noticeable difference. As highlighted in recent videos and notes, the Fed, we believe, has already pivoted away from its hawkish bias to a more cautious tone, perhaps in recognition of the mistakes of 2018. Let's take a look at the charts of key US equity indices, starting with the S&P 500. We have been tracking quite closely the rally in the S&P 500 from this October low all the way up to this 46.34 high, which coincided with the start of a pullback in July. And our view was that this correction would start to unfold down initially to this area before doubling down on the call in September, saying that the S&P 500 was missing a leg lower down towards 42.50, 42.00, right in this support area here. The initial bounce from the support zone was encouraging, but unfortunately, we have now broken below that support zone, the trend channel support, the 200-day moving average, and of course, this 4250 to 4200 support zone. This has necessitated a more neutral stance for us in the S&P 500, given the risks of a deeper pullback appear to be rising, potentially towards this 3850 support zone, which you can see over here. The view of the S&P 500 is in contrast to what we've been seeing in the NASDAQ. And that's because for the past couple of weeks, we've been saying that the NASDAQ was potentially missing another leg lower into this support zone coming in around 14,200. Now, into the end of last week, we got that pullback, which picked up trend channel support coming from off this 16,062 high. It also picked up the waiver quality target coming in around 14,200, and of course, the 200-day moving average, which is coming in around 14,050. What you have to say is, while the NASDAQ holds above this support zone, it could rebound up towards the top of this trend channel, which is coming in around 15,450. If it were to break below here, then you would say that a deeper decline is underway. But while above here, we do need to be mindful that a bounce could develop in the coming sessions, partly due to that Fed pivot, which I've spoken about, which will likely be confirmed in Thursday morning's FOMC meeting. So let's keep an eye on how this plays out, how this support zone holds in the week ahead. Thank you for listening. 